Unify Network 9.5 is now available and there's a few additional features which is just going to enhance your experience with Unify Network. Let's begin with Port Manager and we can start by going to one of our switches. So if we go to the 24HD for example and we go to Port Manager, we can see we are greeted with a little bit more information on the front right here such as we have the port anomaly score. So if there is some sort of anomaly, which we have down here, and we can see that device is connected at the moment. We also are greeted with the connected MAC address on the side, so we can see that information quite easily and quickly as well. And then we have some filters added to the left-hand side as well, which is the 24-hour AI anomaly score. What that is made up of is four different areas. And if you go into the, click on the port and go into insights, you can see this 24-hour AI anomaly score. And what that does, it looks at cable and power, it looks at network loops and storm control, broadcast and discovery, and traffic path health. And what it does, it takes all of those, adds them up over 24 hours and gives you a score. So we're currently sat at 70 with this at the moment. The more issues and the more criticality of the issue, the higher the number will go. When you go into activity log, you can have a little look at what's going on down here as to what the issue might be. So you can see right here, the Port 16 is experiencing frequent STP role state changes. So we can see quite easily and quickly just by diving into this, what that issue might actually be. Next, the other one is channel AI. So we're bringing a lot more AI into this update and we can go to this by going to settings and then Wi-Fi. If we scroll down to the bottom, we have channel AI, which is right here, which says click here to configure. And what that does is it optimizes channels across your APs for optimal network performance. But keep in mind, existing channel width settings are not affected. They are only looking at your channel settings. So let me show you what we have going on here. So we have three different spectrums, 2.4, 5 and 6 gigahertz. And each of those you can actually pick and see what's going on. If you want to optimize your network, we can see these are running two different channels at the moment. So we're good on that side. But to simply optimize, if you have a whole list of APs to get the best out of them, you simply just click optimize. It goes off on the background, does everything that it needs to do, and it will simply just make some suggestions if there are any suggestions to be made. So we can see right here, it's saying, so it's telling me my two access points, we changed channel 17 to 73 and then 77 to 21. Sometimes those channels may not necessarily be the case of how you want to change them, but it's giving you the suggestions based on what the current interference is. And if we do the same with five gigahertz, for example, so we can see we have the two sets of channels right there. So that's gonna go off and optimize right now and it's gonna have a look. And there you go, it's giving you some other suggestions of what you might want to do. Obviously, the more APs you have, the more useful this is gonna be. So you don't have to sit there calculating and checking which channels each of the APs are on. This will basically do it all for you. Now, along with this, we have some statistics on the right hand side. So we have channel usage, TX retries, average signal, and the number of clients that are sat on there. The same with the six gigahertz, that's also on there as well. And then we have the 2.4, which also is included. So that has that information on there too. Also down the bottom, if you wanna filter, anything that has their channel set to auto, you can filter that. And anything that's set to manual, you can filter that as well. So. You can see this is being pushed to the bigger deployments that might get the most use out of this. Now along the top are some of the other features that we've seen before. We have the spectrum analyzer and then we have the radio settings for each one and then also we have the airtime view. There's some other improvements that have come to 9.5 as well. So let's take a look at them one by one. The first one is going to be the security posture. So when you go and set up your Unify network initially, we have this in the networks called default security posture. And what that does is this will apply to all segments of networks, including zones, VLANs, interfaces, unless specifically overridden by custom rules. So what that basically means, if you make multiple VLANs, do you want to allow them all by default or do you want to block them all by default? So if you're going with a zero trust model, for example, and you want to make sure nothing goes through to any networks unless you are explicitly allowing it through, you want to go and click that block all function. It saves you making those extra rules, blocking all your inter VLAN traffic because this does it out of the box for you using one tick box. Next, if we go to internet, click on one of your internet connections and scroll down to the bottom. When you select something for IPv6, we now have a prefix delegation size and we have the auto functionality. If your ISP is telling you to use auto, then you can go now and click this button and keep it as auto. For some of these updates to work, you are going to need the latest Wi-Fi AP version. And currently for my access points, I am running version 8.2. So make sure you are running that along with Unify Network 9.5. The last one I'm going to show you is the multicast and MDNS management. 
Now, this is something that I think a lot of people are going to find useful. And if you want to see a deeper dive into what this actually does and what it is, let me know down in the comments and I will see if I can put something together. But what we do now, we go to networks and we scroll down and we now have this gateway MDNS proxy. And what this does is this forwards MDNS requests across VLANs to enable service discovery. That'd be things like using AirPlay. But if that's something you don't want traversing across some of your networks, you can now remove them from here. So you can keep it auto, which allows all services to go through. You can have it off if you don't want to use MDNS, or you can have it as custom and choose the specific networks you need. Maybe you want something like your main network and your IoT network or your main network and your guest network, whatever that might look like in your guest network and your main network. And then along with that, you can get even more granular and you can choose what you want to allow and not allow through. This is going to significantly reduce your multicast traffic. The more you have ticked and enabled, the more MDNS traffic you are going to see. Along with the MDNS proxy, we have multicast Wi-Fi and MDNS management. So we can click here. That will take us to the Wi-Fi settings within the SSID. So what we can do within here, we go into the IoT network, for example, and we have a few new options on here. So we have multicast and broadcast blocker. And what that basically does is it reduces airtime usage by blocking multicast and broadcast traffic to the Wi-Fi clients, if that's something you want to do. We also have the option to change multicast to unicast traffic. Again, that will do that when it's actually possible. And then finally, this is the multicast and MDNS management that we will probably want to know a little bit more about. This controls how multicast DNS service announcements and discovery traffic are handled across VLANs or your Wi-Fi networks. So we had some of the other settings previously, and then we have these. So if we go to custom now, we can go and create new. And then we have three different options. So we have the discovery scope. So we can choose the different SSIDs. So we can choose the different networks. So this one and this one, for example. Then we can choose the AP scope. Do you want a specific AP or all the APs? So for now, we're going to leave it all. And then we're going to choose the service scope. So this is something similar that we saw on the other page. So we can have things like Amazon devices, Android TV, AirDrop, Apple AirPlay, File Share, et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's, most of it is in here. And obviously a key one is going to be for a lot of people that use smart home that have started using Matter. This is also something that's already in there as well. Just one final thing to add, which was around the port anomalies. So you can get yourself notified using something within Alarm Manager. There is a bunch in here already, but if you go to create alarm, you can go to system and then go to network, you can see some of the ones on here. So STP block, network loop detected, traffic dropping, port excessive traffic. All of these alerts can also be configured to give you any information that you need to be alerted straight away. So that pretty much covers this update. There was a lot in there and a lot to digest. And I think there'll be a few more tutorials coming out based off the back of this update. So if there, again, there's something specific you wanna see, let me know down in the comments and hopefully it's something I will be able to put together for you. I hope you found this video useful. For now, this is Inside Wire and I'll see you in the next one.